Hey everyone, this is Mike from vSwitchZero.com. Today I'm going to go through NSX troubleshooting scenario number 12. So I've done quite a few of these. This is actually the first one that I'm going to do a bit of supplementary video uh, content for as well. This is the problem statement that we've got from our fictional customer here. We've got um, two Linux virtual machines, Linux A2 and A3, that you can see here and here that um, basically are just running an SSH uh, server daemon on them and we want to be able to connect to them from one specific uh, jump box machine. And that jump box machine is here in the management cluster uh, called 2K12M1. So uh, according to this fictional customer, the way the NSX firewall is configured, uh, only this 2K12M1 machine should be able to SSH into either Linux A2 or Linux A3. So let's uh, have a quick look here. So these are the two machines. I'm just going to take another quick look at the summary page. We can see that um, <clears throat> they are reporting VMware tools uh, running an installed guest managed version, which is fine. Uh, we do have uh, the IP address that seems, seems to match, 15.10, and this one should be 11, if we're seeing that correctly, which we are and both have tools installed. Uh, a couple other interesting things to point out. Uh, Linux A3 seems to be in a VLAN back DV port group. Uh, and if we look at Linux A2, it's actually in a different one. So this uh, uh, port group with a VXW prefix on it tells us that this is a logical switch, uh, a VXLAN back port group associated with a logical switch. So this one's uh, VNI 5005 purple network. So that is a bit of an interesting observation, especially considering both VMs are in the same uh, subnet. So we'll, we'll keep that in the back of our mind as we go forward. Uh, another thing too, you can see that there is a security tag called Linux AVMs that's attached to both Linux A2 and Linux A3. So they both have that uh, security tag applied. So if we switch over to the, um, the NSX view here, go to the Flash client, and we'll just go over to the firewall section. And let's have a look at the two rules that should be allowing this to happen. So you can see here, there's rule number 1007 and 1008 in positions one and two here. So at the very top of the, the firewall. The first one should allow uh, SSH traffic from the source of the 2K12M1 virtual machine to a destination of, and this little icon here tells us this is a security group. So there's a security group called Linux AVMs. This is different than the uh, security tag that we saw earlier, even though the name is the same. And you can see here as well that the both rules are applied to the entire distributed uh, firewall. So there's not a case of it being applied to the wrong objects in the inventory or anything like that. And the first rule is allow, so that's fine. And the second one is sort of a catch-all deny for the SSH service to that same destination security group, which is Linux AVMs. So if uh, in rule uh, in position 1, 1007, if uh, a VM with the source other than 2K12M1, not just a VM if it's an IP or anything other than that, uh, the IP associated with 2K12M1 should be rejected by this rule here. And reject's a little bit different than block, so um, in this situation you should actually get a connection refused message when you try to SSH in, not just a timeout. So that's fine, and we can see that both uh, rules are actually set to log as well, which might come in handy. So let's have a quick uh, look at what actually happens when we try to SSH into these two VMs. So I'll just open the putty session here. So this is from earlier, but I'll just try to connect again. So this is to, well, actually, let me just close these and I'll open another session here. So 15.10 is Linux A2. If I try to connect to that one, we get connection refused as expected. So that's good. And if I try to connect to Linux A3, you can see that I'm immediately greeted with a login prompt, which is not the expected behavior. So it actually lets me log in here just fine. It doesn't appear that SSH is being blocked at all. So if we go back here again to the rule set, uh, actually before we do that, let's uh, take a look at the 2K12M1 virtual machine and see if that one uh, is actually experiencing the, the correct behavior. So if I go 
uh, have an RDP session to it here. <clears throat> so this is the 2K12 M1 machine. And if I tried SSH into the first one, it works. And let's try the second one. And it works also. So we do see a different behavior here. So the one that is specified in the first rule uh, does seem to be allowed. So that's, that's a good observation as well. So if I go back here, um, one of the questions that I would certainly have looking at this right off the bat is, you know, we, we know that this rule, these two rules tell us something, right? They don't necessarily mean that the virtual machine 2K12 M1 um, should be allowed to communicate with those two VMs. What we actually see here is that uh, a source virtual machine object is allowed to communicate with whatever is in that security group, right? So that's, you know, a little more general. It's not specifically calling out those machines because there's a couple of things that need to happen. First, we need to make sure that uh, for this virtual machine object, for example, 2K12M1, that's just a virtual machine pointer. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, NSX was able to determine the IP address for that. And the same thing for the security groups too, right? We know that there's a security group here, but are the virtual machines that uh, we want uh, this to apply to, are they actually in the security group? So that would probably be the first thing I'd want to take a look at. So NSX does make it pretty easy to uh, determine what's actually in the security group. So in, from the UI, all you have to do is actually click it and you'll get a few different tabs up here. So under the virtual machines tab, you can see that Linux A2 and A3 are in the security group. Now we don't know exactly how they got in here. I'm assuming it has something to do with the security uh, tags that were applied to the VMs. We could take a look at the, uh, the actual configuration of the security group to find out for sure, but that really doesn't matter. The important thing is that the VMs are in here. So that is what we expect. And you can also see that under the IP addresses tab that NSX was able to determine the IPv4 addresses for uh, these two virtual machines. And this is this is done based on the IP detection type that's configured. Uh, most likely it was just VMware tools, uh, which is the default. So uh, because these guests had tools installed, they report the IP and then NSX is able to obtain that from vCenter here. So that's good. Um, if we look at the other object, the 2K12 uh, M1 virtual machine object, uh, it won't actually tell us the translated IP, but you can see that it does equate to a, uh, a MOID. So we can actually just take a quick look and make sure that um, there is an IP address associated with that. And we can go back over here and we should see that tools is running and it is, it is reporting an IP address here. So I think that should be fine. I'm not uh, too concerned about that, but we can go to the command line and find that out as well if we need to, just to double check. So, um, but then again, you know, I, we did see that particular rule working properly from the uh, 2K12 M1 machine. So we, when we went to the RDP session, it was uh, working as expected. So I have no reason to think that it's not actually matching. So that's basically it for now. Again, this is just the problem half of the uh, scenario. Uh, in a couple of days, I'm going to post the solution as well as some more troubleshooting information. But uh, have a look at the links below. Um, there is a link to the full blog post that has some more information, more screenshots, and might give you some additional information that'll help you to solve this one. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments below, either in YouTube or on my uh, blog as well. If you have any suggestions of things you would, you would try or questions that you have, please feel free to leave them there. If you do have suggestions on other things you'd like to see, potential problems or scenarios, please feel free to let me know as well. Anyways, that's it for now. If you like this, please subscribe and uh, thanks very much.